Hi, I'm Derek and this is DC to Daylight. In this episode, we're on a mission to create a pure sine wave of single frequency using a clever design and an unlikely component, which ensures reliable oscillator starting, stability, and automatic gain control. The incandescent light bulb. This oscillator based around the Wayne Bridge was the subject of Bill Hewlett's master's thesis and later turned into a formal product, the HP 200A audio oscillator. Manufactured in Dave Packard's garage in Palo Alto, California, this turned into the product that launched the Hewlett Packard brand. I would like to think that most of us probably had a similar start in electronics, taking things apart as kids and attempting to put them back together with the occasional screw left over. One thing that particularly baffled me in those early days was a function generator that I had taken apart. Though the function generator seemed to work properly, there was a light bulb on the circuit board, but it didn't light up, and it wasn't located in a place that would be visible to the outside world. When I pulled it out, the circuit stopped working. That old function generator is long gone, however, years later, I read an article pointing out that you can use a bulb to create a low distortion or near-perfect sine wave in conjunction with an op amp. And that's what I want to share with you today. So let's put this thing together and do some measurements. All right, here's the schematic of what we're gonna build today. So I pronounce it Wainbridge Oscillator, but I know technically it's probably Vinbridge Oscillator. Um, so leave a comment and let me know how you pronounce it. Uh, so the original circuit that uh, was in the Stanford thesis was built around tube amplifiers. Uh, we still have the same feedback network like that system, but instead, uh, Jim Williams came up with a design that used an op amp, and this is the circuit that we're going to build today. So like any oscillator, we have to have a couple of things going on in order for it to start oscillating and continue to oscillate uh, in a stable manner, and that is uh, the Barkhausen criteria. We have to have a gain greater than or equal to 1, and we have to have positive feedback from the output to the input, uh, with an integer multiple of 360 degrees, meaning it's in phase. Now our op amp is acting as a differential amplifier. So we have two feedback loops. We have a negative feedback loop, okay, that goes through this variable resistor that we need to tweak once it stabilizes to get the gain equal to one. We have a lamp here that acts as an automatic gain control circuit, and it has a positive temperature coefficient. That means that as we put current through it, it heats up and the resistance increases. When, it's, when you first turn it on, the resistance is low. That's important because when the resistance is low when you first turn this thing on, we have predominantly positive feedback, okay, starting that oscillation. Once this lamp starts to self-heat and stabilize, our gain approaches one if we have this resistor set correctly. Now we have this positive feedback loop, and we have specific values for resistors and capacitors in here that select the fundamental frequency that gets fed back to the input so that it only oscillates at the frequency we tell it to. We have a resistor and capacitor that form a high pass circuit and the same resistor and capacitor values that form a low pass circuit. And in looking at these two waveforms as we plot them on the dynamic signal analyzer, we can see the high pass filter response and we can see the low pass filter response. We can combine these two traces on a dynamic signal analyzer to see exactly what's going on in this feedback loop. And we can see that that single fundamental frequency ideally is the only frequency that gets fed back from the output of the amp back to the input. When we look at signals on an oscilloscope, we're actually watching the signal change in amplitude over time, marching along the x-axis. That's fine for certain measurements, but what if we have one or more sine waves or want to analyze a more complex signal? We can break these individual components that make up this complex signal by looking at it in the frequency domain. This is the job of a spectrum analyzer. Older spectrum analyzers like the one I have here do things in an analog manner. However, modern day tools use very fast FPGAs or field programmable gate array front ends to sample the signal fast, very fast, and do some complex math to take things from the time domain into the frequency domain. This is done with fast Fourier transform or the FFT function, but I'm not a mathematician. I come from the world of test, which leads us to this, the dynamic signal analyzer or DSA. Here I have a Hewlett Packard 8562A, which is basically a big chunk of hardware that samples a signal at the input and does the FFT math to show stuff in the frequency domain. Now, if we want to measure the purity of a sine wave, we can do so with a distortion analyzer. Ironically, we're gonna use the Hewlett Packard HP334A. In general, it takes a sine wave along with any spectral impurities, removes the fundamental signal, and measures any harmonics and noise summing everything together and spitting it out as a single reading on a single gauge. 
The result is called THD, or Total Harmonic Distortion. All right, here's our breadboarded circuit. I'm using an LM741 as the op amp. Um, I may switch to a TLO82 depending on the results that we get. Uh, but you see we have our lamp here that's in our negative feedback portion as well as this resistor here. We're going to have to tweak that. And in our positive feedback, we have the high pass filter here and the low pass filter over here. We'll go ahead and plug in our oscilloscope to the output pin here so that we can monitor the waveform. And uh, I can watch the THD on the meter here, which I'll show you in a second. So you can see we have some instability in the oscillator. So I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this potentiometer. All right, so we're just gonna tweak that. I'm going in the wrong direction apparently. So let's flip back the other way. And we're gonna hit it. We're gonna keep going until we see some clipping and then we're gonna back it off. And then we should get uh, some relatively low distortion. All right, so you see I'm clipping at the bottom half there. Looks like the oscillator is stabilizing. I'm going to tweak this potentiometer some more and you can see how the total harmonic distortion is actually changing a little bit. I don't think we're going to get any better than that. So we're on 0.3 and the needle is measuring about 0.45. So 0.3 times 0.45 is 0.135% total harmonic distortion. I have one last trick up my sleeve and that's to use my 24-bit uh, sound card. We'll connect that to a program called ARTA, A-R-T-A, and that'll actually show us the spectrum. And I trust those measurements a little bit more than this thing. Even with it disconnected, it still kind of shows a little bit of noise. So yeah, I think some of the caps are starting to go in this. So, so let's look at that really quick. This is the 24-bit sound interface that I'm using and uh, we're just connected directly to the output of the uh, breadboard. Now let's look at the Arta software. And what's nice about this is I don't need to carry around all that heavy gear and I can run it right on the laptop and it spits out the THD plus noise right here at the bottom. So we're at 0.1% and that's the best that I could get the TLO82. I did get it down to 0.084. I'm not really sure how I did that, but I just left it on for about half an hour and kept tweaking it. Uh, but anyway, here's our fundamental frequency, and then we have our harmonics, one, two, three, four, fifth, so on and so forth. And um, what it's doing is removing this, and like we said before, accumulating or adding up all of the noise plus the harmonics there. And that's how we get our measurement. So it looks like 0.1% uh, THD with this particular oscillator and op-amp combination is the best that I can do. So uh, maybe with a higher quality op-amp, uh, the linearity would be better. Um, but uh, I'm going to call it quits here today. So all in all, was it actually worth it to put this circuit together? Um, I think so. Uh, just to look at the technology at the time, you know, and appreciate that this was really kind of a, a new and emerging uh, science, you know, creating uh, stuff that actually fits on your bench and, and creates decent test signals. So, and it also launched Hewlett Packard, which is interesting uh, in its own right. But you can take a handful of components and create a, a sine wave generator with this circuit up to one megahertz from my understanding. I didn't go that high. But I mean, you could if you wanted to uh, make your own uh, sine generator that went down in frequency. But as you go down in frequency, uh, you have to increase the, the thermal mass of the, the actual filament. So you'd have to string probably multiple uh, lamps in series. I did try several different op amps and the 741 and the TLO82 actually performed the best. I got down to 0.084 with the 741. And I was actually kind of surprised at that because that's kind of an old op amp um, on its own. Uh, but you could experiment with different op amps, uh, different linearities. I had some that were exhibiting crossover distortion and they were just worth throwing away. I also did not experiment with scaling the values of R and C up and down. Maybe you could get a lower noise floor by decreasing the resistance um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you end up playing with this, let me know down in the comments or in the Element 14 community. I would love to hear if you were able to get this thing to work or if you played around with it. Now I did try different function generators that I have on my bench here. I tried my B&K Precision that was actually about 2% uh, total harmonic distortion and kind of a weird looking sine wave. Uh, and the Multicomp Pro actually performed the best at 0.035%. From my understanding, that has a uh, digital synthesis chip inside of it. So, hey, technology has come a long way, but it was worth, I think, uh, stepping back here to take a look at that. Anyway, interact with me in the comments or at the Element 14 community. Links are down below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.